Hello, welcome to the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory YouTube channel. This presentation discusses bovine abortion necropsy techniques. Welcome to the instructional video on evaluating and collecting samples from an aborted or stillborn bovine fetus. The necropsy in this video is performed by Dr. Kelly Alms, a board certified pathologist in the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory in Manhattan, Kansas. The ideal specimen to collect for an abortion or stillborn workup is the entire fetus and a portion of the placenta. This is not always possible due to the size of the calf or the time constraints that may occur over the weekends and holidays. Therefore, collecting and submitting appropriate samples are necessary in certain situations. When not submitting the entire calf, the materials needed to properly collect and ship samples include a sealable container with 10% buffered formalin, a permanent marker, two red top tubes, two 3 or 5 ml syringes, one 18 or larger gauge needle, eight to 10 whirlpack bags, a knife or scalpel, forceps, scissors, and a handsaw and shipping supplies. Evaluate the external appearance of the fetus and placenta before sampling. Estimate the gestational age if possible and note any lesions. Look for evidence of cotyledonary necrosis or cupping and evaluate the thickness of the placenta by spreading it out in a single layer. The placental tissues can be gently rinsed with water if they are obscured by dirt, straw, or manure. Place four to five sections of placenta, including cotyledons and the intercotyledonary tissue, from several different areas in formalin. Placental lesions can be localized, so collecting samples from several areas is important. Another two to three similar sections should be placed in a whirl pack bag. No other samples should be placed in the bag with the fresh placenta due to the possibility of cross-contamination. The fetus should be necropsied as any other bovine in left lateral recumbency. Begin by completely reflecting the fore and hind limbs. The tongue, esophagus, and trachea should be removed to the level of the thoracic inlet. Next, make a ventral midline skin incision that extends to the thoracic inlet. Reflect dorsally the skin and subcutaneous tissues. Then, incise through the peritoneum into the abdominal cavity. Grossly evaluate the abdominal viscera for any abnormalities and begin taking samples. First, locate the abomasum. This will be the largest of the four stomachs. Using a needle and syringe, draw out two to three mLs of abomasal fluid and place it in a labeled red top tube. Please make sure to label the tube with the origin of the sample. The abomasal fluid can range from clear to yellow to red and is typically quite mucoid. If there is evidence of colostrum in the abomasum, this sample does not need to be collected. Abomasal fluid is particularly valuable for culture, including brucella, tritrichomonas, and campylobacter. Next, take two sections of liver, place one in a whirl pack bag and the other in formalin. It is important that all sections of tissue that are to be placed in formalin be less than one centimeter in thickness. The exception of this is the brain. All fresh tissue should be placed in individual whirl pack bags to prevent cross-contamination. Please do not combine fresh samples in a common bag or container. As with the liver, collect two sections of kidney and spleen, one for a fixed sample and one to remain fresh in a whirl pack. Now open the thorax by transecting the ribs at the costochondral junctions and reflecting the entire rib cage dorsally. If there is any free fluid in the thoracic cavity, use another syringe to collect a sample and place it in a red top tube. Again, please make sure to label the tube with the origin of the sample. This sample can be used to check for fetal antibodies in place of serum. Next, remove the pluck for sampling. The heart muscle should be examined for any malformations by examining all four chambers and valves. Two sections each of lung and heart should be collected for fresh and fixed specimens. The lung is frequently affected in cases of bacterial abortion 
and the heart muscle can contain lesions caused by Neospora caninum. The final thoracic tissues to collect are a single section of thymus and a lymph node to be placed in a whorl pack bag. There is no need to submit a sample of these tissues in formalin. The thymus can be important for virus isolation, and the lymph node is particularly important for BVDV PCR testing. Three sections of skeletal muscle from different locations should be placed in formalin. This can be the limbs, tongue, or diaphragm. As with the cardiac muscle, these tissues may contain lesions associated with Neospora caninum. Next, disarticulate the head at the atlanto-occipital joint. Cut the skull in half or remove the bony skull cap to expose the entire brain. Again, the brain is the only tissue that does not need to be one centimeter or less in thickness for fixation in formalin. Even if the brain appears quite soft or soupy, it should be collected and submitted as fixed tissue. It is important to note that the submission of serum collected from the dam of the aborted or stillborn calf has limited diagnostic value. Paired serum samples from the dam will sometimes provide more information than a single sample. This table lists the appropriate samples for an abortion workup. The placenta is a very important tissue to collect and both fixed and fresh samples should be submitted. Likewise, both fixed and fresh samples of liver, spleen, kidney, lung, and heart are also needed. The three fluids requested for submission, abomasal, ocular, and thoracic fluid should be submitted as fresh samples only. Please notice that for abortion workups, intestinal tissues do not need to be submitted. The three tissues that should be submitted as fixed only are the thymus, skeletal muscle, and the brain. Please remember that all fixed tissues except the brain need to be no more than one centimeter in thickness for proper fixation to occur. This table can be found on the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory website under Diagnostic Lab and Necropsy. After collecting the samples, please completely fill out the submission form. The submission form can be found at www.ksvdl.org under the drop-down menu labeled Submission Forms. Select the general submission form and fill in the top portion. For abortion workups, enter Abortion Workup Pathologist Discretion in the History section. Also provide a detailed history as this will increase the probability of a diagnosis. After assuring all samples are labeled and the submission form is completed, everything can be packaged for shipment to the lab. This shipment falls under the Category B Infectious Substance Guidelines set forth by the Department of Transportation. These requirements include shipping specimens in a triple packaging manner. The formalin container with the fixed tissue needs to be placed in a secondary container with absorbent material in between. Tubes should be properly cushioned to prevent breakage in transit. Fresh tissues should be refrigerated, not frozen, and set with ice packs. All specimens should be placed inside a cooler and the submission form should be placed inside a Ziploc bag to prevent contamination or moisture accumulation during shipment. The necropsy field kit shown in this video can be ordered by calling the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory at 866-512-5650. Overnight shipment is recommended to assure samples are in the best condition possible when they reach the lab. Similar to all diagnostic testing, proper collection, handling, and shipping of samples for abortion workups will increase the probability of a definitive diagnosis. If you have any questions, please call the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory toll-free at 866-512-5650. Thank you for tuning in to the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab YouTube channel. If you have questions about this video or any of our services, please visit us at ksvdl.org.